Good morning, Calvary. Pastor Chad here with your word for the day on this uh, Thursday, about a week before our Christmas Eve services. But speaking of Christmas Eve services, hope you're planning on joining us uh, either live or online. Uh, you're going to have both options, and we're going to have a bunch of them. You can check out the times online. But uh, we're just a week away from celebrating the birth of Christ, and what a beautiful season it is. Hey, we're in Mark chapter 15 today. Uh, looking at the first few verses. But let me ask you this question. Have you ever been falsely accused? I mean, where somebody blamed you for something, accused you of something, questioned your motives. Um, if you were, how did you respond to that? How did you want to respond? Because I know when I've been falsely accused of stuff, I really, really, really want to respond and defend myself. And yet... Uh, that's not really what Jesus did and modeled for us. So, Mark chapter 15, first five verses, uh, Jesus has been arrested. Uh, he's been on trial uh, in front of the Sanhedrin, uh, religious leaders. Peter has denied knowing who he was, and that's where the story picks up. Verse 1 of chapter 15, And as soon it was, as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council, and they bound Jesus and led him away and delivered him over to Pilate. And Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus answered him, You have said so. Not really a detailed answer, but it's a, sh it's a short, clear, yes, I agree with you. And the chief priests accused him of many things. And Pilate again asked him, Have you no answer to make? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further answer so that Pilate was amazed. He made no other answer and Pilate was amazed. Uh, you know, Jesus didn't answer them in part to fulfill a prophecy. Isaiah 53 uh, if you haven't read Isaiah 53, it's a prophecy about Jesus. Uh, and uh, in verse 7, it says, He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter and like a sheep before its shears is silent, so he opened not his mouth. You can read the rest of it and see how accurately it describes Jesus as the Messiah. But he didn't respond. And, and, and I think not only was Jesus fulfilling prophecy, but I think maybe he was modeling for us the best way to respond to false accusations. I'm not talking about in a court of law where they put you on trial and ask you what the truth is. I'm talking about that, that casual thing where people are accusing you of this and accusing you of that. And sometimes it's family or sometimes it's friends or sometimes it's an enemy. Uh, you know, sometimes it's a coworker. And, and maybe Jesus was modeling for us how to respond to these false accusations. Uh, Psalm chapter 3, uh, the psalmist prays, you, O Lord, are a shield about me, that my glory and the lifter of my head. I, I love that. The psalmist says, God, you're, you're the shield about me. You're the one who's my glory. You're the one who's going to lift up my head. In Proverbs 27, 2, it says, let another, let another praise you and not your own mouth. Not just praise you, but let another defend you and not your own mouth. So what if... You and I responded to accusations with a quiet trust in God rather than attacking back in anger. What if we allowed God to exalt us rather than trying to protect our reputation? What if we let our friends speak on our behalf instead of defending ourselves? You see, that's not our natural inclination. Our natural inclination is to defend ourselves, to protect our reputation, to attack back. And yet that's not what Jesus did. That's not how he responded to false accusations. Now, yes, I know he had a purpose in that he knew he was going to the cross and he was paying for our sins and redeeming our lives. And so I get that. But still, there is such a, a power in allowing God to be the one who defends you rather than yourself. Do we really believe like the psalmist that, that God is our shield and that he is the one who's going to lift up our head? 
You know, multiple times in the New Testament, James and Peter, it says, humble yourselves under God's mighty hand that he may exalt you at the proper time. Trust God to be the one who lifts you up. Now, the reality is we can only do that if our character represents Jesus. In other words, if somebody attacks our character and our character is full of flaws, uh, then we're, they're not actually false accusations, they're just accusations. But if your character represents Christ and somebody falsely accuses you, you know what's going to happen? They're going to end up looking like idiots. You trust God to defend your reputation and your character. And you can only respond like Jesus in those situations if your character actually represents Jesus. If you've been yielding yourself to God, you've been asking the Holy Spirit to give you that fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control, if those are the characteristics of your life, even when people accuse you, no one's going to believe them. Okay, yeah, there'll be a few people who believe them who, who are just choosing to do that. But the people that matter, the people that count, they'll know your heart. They'll know your character. And they will trust you. Because God is the one who is our shield. He's our glory. And he'll be the lifter of our head. So let another praise you. Let another defend you and not you yourself. Uh, and you'll be amazed at what God does and how he turns you into a peacemaker. God bless Calvary. Have a great day.